Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20 very quickly. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Everybody is projected. Let's read together at the count of three. One, two, three, go. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Please say in the streets. Say in the streets. This particular entity called wisdom. The Bible said she cried. And she uttered her voice across various locations. One of which is the streets. Please tell the person by your side again, the streets. Let's continue our reading, verse 21, very quickly. Continue, one, two, go. In the opening of the gates in the city, she uttered. So exactly what we are saying so far is that the first scripture says wisdom cried out. And the first location where she cried was in the streets. The second location was she cried in the chief places of concourse. That is a place of unanimous agreement, a place where mindsets meet, a place where popular opinion align. That's the chief places of concourse. The third location is in the opening of gates. Please say the opening of gates. Please go ahead, say the opening of gates. The, the, the title of our discourse this evening is the opening of gates opening of gates. You see wisdom does not cry everywhere. There were locations particular locations where wisdom went to utter her counsel. There were particular locations where wisdom went to cry out her counsel so that the sons of men that want to make meaning out of their life at that junction of decision making they can draw wisdom. They can take counsel. They can take bearing from the utterances of wisdom. And so the first location, I'm going over it again, is in the streets. The second location is at the place of concourse. And the third location is at the opening of gates. What is the opening of gates? Please say a new season. Say a season of transition. Because from time to time, season to season, you will come into decisions, you will come into experiences that you are new to. There are many people that are trusting the Lord for a change of situations. Many people are trusting the Lord for a change of outcome. And many of the things we are aspiring and we are trusting God for are not things we are used to. So as you step into those new seasons and new phase of your life, it will require a new mentality. It will require a new way of doing things. It will require a new worldview. In fact, as a matter of fact, the fact that a door is open for you is not enough guarantee that you will be able to maximize access because there are people that have the opportunity to meet, meet certain people that can change their life forever. However, they don't know the protocol of access. There are people that meet people and they have not prepared their heart as regarding articulating their thoughts within two minutes. Let me give you one illustration. If you have the opportunity to be in a lift, maybe an elevator with Bill Gates for just two minutes, two minutes, do you have your your plan, your goal? Do you have your dream? Do you have your vision well articulated that you can present it in two minutes? If you have the opportunity to sit with an investor, someone who is capable of committing enough resources to help you achieve whatever your desired goal is, you have a chance to sit with them for five minutes. Do you have your plans and your pursuit well articulated to present it in five minutes as clear as possible. Wisdom, she cries in the opening of gates. There are people here going from all night to all night trusting God for a contract, some trusting God for marital settlement, some trusting God for the fruit of the womb, some trusting God for all kinds of outcomes. But wisdom is crying at the opening of gates. If you can hear me so far, please say amen. amen. Listen, there are many ways Satan can destroy a man and blessings are part of it. The blessings that come to your life can become 
an atmosphere that exposed you unnecessarily into situations and circumstances you are not prepared for. There are many faithful husbands who were living faithful, very, very committed to the institution of marriage until they entered into sudden blessings. They have no capacity to stay inside that blessing and not be corrupted by the power that comes with mammon. So gradually, a man who is a loyal husband, not because he is a flat per se, but there is too much money at his disposal that not spending it looks like a waste for him. Then he begins to engage all kinds of pleasure. In the search of pleasure, he dabbles into corridors where God has not ordained for his feet. This is how so many people, your prayer point is as little as it is before God. What that prayer point is capable of turning you into is more important to God. Because there is a law that vets every visitation of God. The blessings of the Lord, they will make rich and they will not come with sorrow. When you say, Lord, increase, as you are saying, increase. You see, the realm where God operates he is capable of carrying out the whole process and see the end before it even comes into the physical. So, as you are shouting, they add, they add two billion to you. As they add two billion to your spiritual state, your spiritual state developed a, 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 a new walking step. I say, ah, so now, so this person be. Now, they, they will not wait till you do it physically. There is a version of you, a, a version of you that they can, they can test your, 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 your tendencies. They know what you are capable of. There are people telling God, just try me and see. He has tried you. He, has, he knows you. They, they saw that the day they added small substance to you. They gave you power to get wealth. They saw that you became sensitive to respect. Very sensitive. You just pass and somebody did not greet you. You now say, hmm. God began to help a brother. God began to help him and give him a certain level of rest around him. These brothers, you see, these things I speak about, there are real cases. This brother literally began to evolve before our eyes. Very sensitive to honor. He cannot come to a meeting and, and not be brought to the front. He will just, from wherever he is, he will start sending ushers. Go and tell them that so so person is around. So as God will have it, I will intentionally ignore that person. After he will send a note that he should come and give me that. He has another meeting that, you know, she does her so tight. In my mind, I say, fire on, fire on. We will never endorse this kind of indiscipline. You see, there are people that actually are not prepared for the things they are asking for. There are people here, the moment the, the light of God comes upon your head and you become visible, you, you don't know what you are capable of doing. There is only one particular thing that can give you stature to enter that door and not be corrupted. It's called wisdom. Wisdom quiet in the opening of gates. I've seen a lot of parents, especially all our new generation parents. You know, they think, they think parenting is about uncle doing matching outfit with your child. All, all your clothes is the same. You now, you now I saw a, a, a baby in the aircraft. I saw a baby with, with dyed hair. They dye a part of his hair. They gel the other side. They put earring for a boy. So I was now thinking, what kind of mindset produced this type? Please tell the person by your side, no wisdom. Let me share something with you. Just in case you are able to use your labor, use your, your strength, and you, you are able to assess a door. Entering the door is not guaranteed that that realm is your own. Because in this kingdom, reversal is also a possibility. You can enter a realm and wisdom will give a certificate that we didn't approve this one. You are not qualified to stand there. There are many people they will sit down like this, lost in their thoughts. Ask them what's happening. They say, I remember, I remember in 2000 when my hand used to hold money. Many ladies. In fact, a lady was bragging to one of my friends yesterday. <laughs> See, in those days, when girls not girls. And the thing she's bragging about has no link, no correlation with righteousness or the demands of the kingdom. She said she was, you know, arguing with somebody in the place they stay and was insulting the person that she's a cheap, she's a cheap slave queen, that, that she's not... 
know she said in those days when girls were girls that the men who used to come for her forget we are staying in the same apartment now in those days when girls were girls the houses that they rented for me when my friend told me the things they brag about now now the person that is bragging was not the one that rented the house so they draw you and drag, drag your empty head into a realm that you, you don't have any knowledge about how to enter that realm. They bring you momentarily. I, I already shared with you how, how the princes in darkness, how they break the defenses of kingdom ladies. They come and meet you as a young lady who is living within your means. Next thing, the brother just come and say, I don't know why, I don't know why I just like you. From the beginning, they will pretend as though there is no string attached. From the beginning, they will almost convince you that there's nothing that we need. We, in fact, the only reason why I'm calling you is I'm looking for how to bless you. Let me share something with you. Hold it dear to your heart. Every favor has a reason. Do you, do you hear what I said? <laughs> every, see, say it. Every favor. The reason why I'm saying this is for those sisters who are sitting with us and those brothers. A sugar mommy is already sending you gifts. Sending you gifts. You are your own. You see t-shirts. You see jeans. Oh, you know, they send money to your account. You don't know why. <laughs> and they have not said anything. And you, you, you now come on Sunday and say, there is something about me. There is something. I don't know why for, for some time now. Everywhere I go, people are just, people are just blessing me. And T, let me ask you a question. Why is it only men that are blessing you? If it is favor, it will cut across all gender. When you find out that men become helpless, their ATMs become, become submitted to you. <laughs> Go and stand in front of the mirror. You will see why.
examples of exposure. The earth, which is our own place of habitation, is an enclosure. It's an enclosure in the sense that there are laws that guide expression within the earth. The earth is for man. So if a spirit wants to contribute and carry out his merchandise in the earth, he will need to partner with a man. It's, 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 it's actually a controlled space. That's what the earth is. Seasons are also enclosures because within those seasons are particular experiences that are only factored within certain seasons. If you are with me so far, please say amen. There are also strategic relationships that are enclosures. There are certain individuals when they enter your life, they come with everything that actually comes with that realm they have stepped into. There are prayer points that God will answer by bringing a person into your life. And the moment they appear, heaven knows that they've answered your prayer. How you deal with them is your own business. And heaven will not teach you how to maximize the opening of gates. This is why they situate wisdom there to cry. Gates can open, but can you enter? There are many systems we have that can provoke the hand of the heaven. But it is not only heaven that causes for intervention. Because when heaven moves, the earth must replicate the motion of the heaven. It is supposed to be for us on earth as it already is in heaven. While we pray, our prayer can bind things on earth that will be bound in heaven. Our prayers can lose things on earth that will be loosed in heaven. But when heaven takes action, the earth is supposed to take rest. Not too many people are catching up with the motion of heaven concerning their life. Because God will move. Every necessary step will be taken. But the capacity of man to align, to align to the program of God becomes the challenge. It will interest you how many prayer points were answered that we did not, we did not realize. It, this is actually my answer. It will interest you how many prayer points were answered and we ignored it and walked past. Let me share something with you. As far as this kingdom is concerned, most of your answers will come as challenges. Please write this one down. It will take God sometimes to bring you out of your comfort zone so that you can realize what he has been saying all along. And the greatest, the greatest hindrance to following the will of God is comfort. Because the will of God will many, many times, most of the occasions, the will of God will necessitate that you step out of your area of rest, of comfort. Another example of an enclosure is affliction. Affliction can be an enclosure. A man can be in a situation, cry, wake up from the tears and the situation is still there. There are people that go and drink every evening. Call them and just ask them what is the problem. They are trying to escape a reality. There is something that they want to detach their consciousness from. No matter how much they run, you still come back and meet what is waiting for you. Your way out is a gate. Can I share something with you? Come on, can I share something with you? Whether you are trying to live an unpalatable experience or you are trying to enter a desired change or a desired outcome. And in fact, in, in both cases, your end destination is a gate. Tonight I'm sharing this so that a level of spiritual intelligence will come from God's people. Listen, the scripture actually says, ask huh? and you will receive. Amen. For whosoever accept, receive it. That person who just asked and received, the Bible commanded him to start seeking. Because the realm that you have bothered, the realm you have submitted your petition to, the realm and this physical realm are not the same. When God gives you money, you will not receive money as money. Just as when a herbalist makes you blessed, eh, he will not give you a certificate. It's only a BU that gives you a certificate so that you go and get a job. If a herbalist wants to give you prosperity, he will program something around your head. Something unseen that has capacity to command real-time wealth. Here you can see now. You're doing makeup from morning till night. The lady will go to Kogi. He will not 
not believe. See, the things I share, they are out, they are out of testaments of various counseling sessions. Your, your guy that promised you, that said that if he doesn't talk to you in a day, he cannot rest. The, the Baba will just tell her that all, all she needs is to put this eye pencil by this side and make sure his eye and her eye jump. That's all. That is all. So by all, by, by all, she will be making sure she's looking in your eye. The moment your eye, woe betide you if you don't know your God. You know what they are trying to do? They are trying to subvert you against your will. They are trying to command a reaction from you without your consent. You would, I, 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 I heard a case of a man who got up after 35 years of wedding and of marriage rather, got up and asked his wife, who are you? As the, the veil, the, the veil, it came to pass that the veil fell on that day. Because even charms, even charms too, you do upgrade. This is why they travel every December because you need to go and update these terms of this contract. If not, a man packed from a particular compound house, packed for like one month, came back sweating after one month. Another person is already living inside that apartment. He was sweating and begging the person that, please, if there is something you want to remove, there is something, something that, he, that there is something. The Abali said, the only way they can give him a new is that he must bring that old. Even in the world of darkness, the seed of the new is the old. See, you are, you are the only one just moving around with your certificates <laughs> and say, my name is when, when thrones meet, your English, your English have no stature there. You, you will see somebody that is less qualified, somebody not as beautiful as you, somebody not having any of the things that are your physical advantages, you will realize the arm of the flesh will fail man. In the face of the permutation of spirits, your advantage in the flesh is a disadvantage. People have cried to me, People wake me up even by 2 a.m. in the night and say, Apostle, please pray. The opening of gates. Please, I need us to pray for one minute wherever you are. Lord, every season that I have tarried too long here, that I have celebrated too much around. Every change of situation that I am due for, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray, I receive an impactation of wisdom to move.
the lives of God's people and the Lord confirmed his words with signs and wonders and we had, listen, we had testifiers right here this amazing woman she came after the meeting we're sitting down here and she said she had gone for is it an x-ray now, a scan and it was shown that the baby was wrongly preached presentation now um, she seemed so worried and the Lord just said put your hand on the womb put your hands there I prayed for her and I told her, you will testify next week. Because as you go home, a power will twist the baby back to alignment. Listen, listen, listen. Was it on Monday? Early morning. She called and said, I want to go for another scan now. Just pray this last minute prayer again, just in case. I said, but we prayed. She said, just in case. So we prayed. What I want to show you is Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and 3. Please get up. This is, this is the new scan result. Your baby is probably alive now. Listen, listen. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and 3. It says, I will go before you and make every crooked places straight. Any crooked thing around your life, God is about to make it straight now. You know the next thing the scripture says? It says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass. Every gate hindering you from stepping into a next season. Every gate resisting people in your bloodline from attaining new heights, from attaining heights, heights of visibility, heights of promotion, heights of achievements by the power of the Most High. He says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. You know, her, her testimony reminds me of our, our beloved um, lady. I think she came, she came here the other day to give this testimony. The one that, whose baby was, 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 was dead in the womb. And then they diagnosed it, watched it for some period, and then recommended that they go on a surgical operation to excavate, of course, the dead uh, 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 fetus from the womb. And the husband was just a man of faith. He continued to believe. They were wheeling them to the theater. The woman was already on top of that, um, whatever they call it, the stretcher. They were wheeling them to the theater. He said, Pastor, I still believe God can do it. I said, what kind of dangerous faith is this? Everything has, has suggested hopelessness. And I said, if that is the case, put your hands on your wife's womb. We prayed over the phone. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare life. You are the resurrection and the life. You know what? They went into the theater and the baby began to kick. <laughs> If you are here and you are trusting God for certain finger of wickedness to be overturned, you are trusting God for a change of medical reports, you are trusting God for something new, just connect to what God has done in the life of this woman now and call God great names and say, you, who did this? I know my case is little. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. 
verse 3 says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches that are in secret places. Can, can you see that in your Bible? I need somebody to turn this into a prayer in the next one minute. The treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. God bless you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 we want to be very quick now. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. First Corinthians Everybody is projected. Let's read together at the count of two. One, two, go. Listen, listen. Just, just as I have registered before now, that everybody that you continue to see being kept against their will in certain undesirable situations, in certain seasons that begin to look like obvious delay. Listen, there is a very clear difference between process and delay. When you continue to interpret delay as process, even the devil is happy with that level of deception. He knows that, you know, there are people that are supposed to be very, very discontented with the situation of things at the moment. They continue to console themselves that God is taking me through a process. I'm telling you, It's an obvious lack of character. Something that pursues everybody that comes to marry you. Something that makes sure it is, it is like a veil that hides your beauty. Your beauty will do the work of opening the door. But to enter the next season, your character will stand as a gatekeeper. Warning anybody coming near you that be very careful. There are people that are telling themselves that it is me against the world. Me against the world? Are you serious? me against the world. There are people that say, I don't need anybody to hell with everybody. Let me share something with you. You can never not need anybody. Please, don't get this. Be looking at me. Stay here. There are people that are lying to themselves that they are one man army. Aye. The Bible says, woe be the man that is alone in the day of, of what? Aye. Your obvious bad attitude continue to push people out of your life there are people sitting here if you have maximized just by now only the people God has given you the opportunity to have met in your lifetime if you have maximized just relationship you will be amazed the place it has taken you to there are people as I'm standing here I can never I can never see them cry and not walk there are people here if I see a tears from, from fall from their eye I will be restless until that tears is dried. 
and all they have with me is a relationship. It's not enough for gates to open. The question is, can you maximize the opening of gates? It's not enough for them to recommend your name to that man. The question is, when you and the man meet one on one, have you maximized the seasons of preparation to give you capacity to maximize that opening? There are people here that opportunities will continue to come. The gates continue to open. But we continue to do things the same way. There are some of us, gossip, gossip is the only thing cheating you from maximizing the opening of gates. You go and tell this person this thing and in the day of transition, there is no season in a man's destiny when accusation is more potent than the day of transition. The moment they begin to discuss your name in the corridor of power, all of the things you thought were hidden, it will come to limelight. Suddenly they say, ah, it was, it was this person that was telling me the other day about, about you. And then the person who wants to bless you say, is that so? A careless gossip of five minutes has closed a lifetime opportunity. And they will never call you and say, did you really say this? All the devil needs is just to create some level of unclarity around your true character. Listen, if you don't have something good to say about a person, keep quiet. Just try. It, it will be hard, but keep quiet. When you see people gang up, trying to malign somebody's image, just ask yourself one question. Would they pay me for contributing? Withdraw. Withdraw quickly. It was that the NHL had shared something. He said, don't be part of any gang up to bring anybody down. Opening of gates. A great and effectual door has been opened unto me, says the apostle. He says, but with doors comes adversaries. Adversaries and doors, God bless you. Adversaries and doors go hand in hand. The moment a door opens, there are adversaries that are around there. Listen, let me share this quickly with you. You will be amazed the number of spectators around your life. You will be amazed the number of people that are following the story of your destiny. You are looking like you are failing today. The moment you prosper, you will not believe how many people knew you. I shared this some time back. <laughs> if you know how many people are following up the story of your life, some of them are following it silently. They will never greet you, never send hi. Everything you post, they, they zoom it, they zoom, they check your face, check and say, Kai, in down the lean. They follow every step. And then there are people who are incensed with one, you know, anger or another, and they are hoping for one day, just as a guy and a lady will be dating, and then the relationship did not work, maybe it broke up badly, and then one or the two of them, but most of the time is one. One person among the two will begin to keep an itchy ear, waiting to hear something tragic happen to the other person so that they can now say, you, you think you can play with grace. And, and <laughs> There are many sisters here, but the people who do these things more are brothers. Every evening you cannot rest. There's, there's one particular number. Everything they upload, you go and check it. You will read it. You will look at it. You are hoping. You are waiting. That Nigerian film story, it will never play. Your plan is one of these days, God will be blessing you. Then that other person will be, will be falling more and more. Then one day as it came to pass, you both of you will now meet somewhere. You, you are in a jeep. The person is probably trying to sort their change from one or other. Then you now say, ah, is that, is that not you, Angela? <laughs> It will not happen like that. You see, the way you are praying and trusting God that God will bless you, everybody is also trusting God. So, if your joy, if your fulfillment is based on somebody else's challenge and downfall, that's, that's witchcraft already. Now, there are people here this night that will need to ask the Holy Ghost, take this pain away. Take it. You will not know the kind of baggage you are carrying from your past. There are many things... Can I share something with you? There are people sitting here today that there are other people, if you hear that something bad happened to them, 
the first feeling that will come to you is joy. You will try to, you will now say, God, no, God, God, forgive me, forgive me, boy. <laughs> Let me share something with you. In that height of that season when the sons of the bond women produced a militant group. You see, every, this English I'm speaking now is just to avoid calling a particular name. So that name, you know what I'm trying to say, huh? Good. So the sons of the bond women, they produced a militant group that were very, very, you know, passionate about wrecking havoc to the body of Christ and to Nigeria as a whole. Now, that group, it came to pass that a news came online that they were trying to, you know, prepare a particular bomb and in the process of preparation, the bomb exploded and all of them died. When I read it, joy entered me. I, 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 now, I now caught myself. I said, but why am I happy? You will need to realize that your enemy is not God's enemy. And it is because of that one that you are happy that they died in heaven is sorrow. It's a sinner that died. It's a sinner that died. If you are not careful, the, the, the situation and circumstances around you, it will denature your real Christian disposition. You will begin to live like an unbeliever. You will be actually happy about certain tragedies. A Christian, if you will truly walk after the... In fact, see what the Bible said. It says, love your enemies. Don't, there's no interpretation. That, that, it, don't mean, it means it like that. He says, do good to them that despitefully hurt you. You know what our experience is now? We have special prayer programs where we call on the wrath of God to cut off the unsaved in their sin. They are, the value of their soul does not mean anything to us. If you want to know how much we have been changed, how much we have been denatured because of how much, you know, wickedness we have interacted with and we too, we now took a disposition so that since, since this is how the world is, we too, we let everybody stay in his lane. In this kingdom, there's nothing like my lane. In fact, the heart of the new covenant is not willing that any should perish, but that all, all, please tell the person by your side, all, should come to repentance. I'm sharing this because the one singular resistance for many people entering in through those doors God opened for them is a weight, a baggage, a great, a great level of bitterness that they have hoarded in their hearts. And although your reason for being bitter is legitimate, it will still deprive you of assessing new seasons. Is God blessing somebody here? The scripture says with joy you will draw from the wells of salvation this thing called joy is not is not too many people that have it too many people are working with one level of bitterness or another and then the promises of God are there for us but we cannot enter because the requirement is joy the reason why I began by citing the example of relationships I believe it's responsible for, you know, a great deal of the disappointments and the pain many people are walking around with. There are people that are broken, they are broken, and then they are going around broken, trusting God for a new season, and God needs to fix you before a new door opens. There are people here that cannot have any quality relationship, any healthy relationship, because they have gone through so much abuse. There are sisters sitting here listening to me now. They believe that men has come. They have met so many shades, so many kinds of Jacobs, you know, all kinds of. Now the brothers have changed. The brother is now living his life. You, you cannot because in this kingdom, no matter how much you prepare, no matter how much you also pretend, it is deep that call deep. If you are not actually repaired, that broke that that state of, of of alteration that your situation and circumstances has brought you into, if God does not fix you, you will attract your kind. You know, people who are broken, people who are hurting, they are known to also cause hurt for other people. So you 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 will be amazed how many people cannot step into the next season. And although you bully your way, I've said it many places, and I'm reiterating it here. It does not matter if you like 
go and meet any lady, a Yahoo boy, a slave queen can meet in a club. Both of them can say, I love you, I love you. They go and go to any pastor that, that doesn't have any reason, you know, to checkmate anything. And he tells them, by the power vested upon me, by the God of heaven, I pronounce you husband and wife. That, that thing, that thing that happened there, although it looks like you enter the door, it's just a matter of time. The real dividends of marriage, you will not see it. The door is open for there are adversaries. The door for marital settlement is open. There are adversaries. The door for financial freedom is open. There are adversaries. Any door God opens, accompanying that door are adversaries that accuse men. Adversaries that continue to state potent reasons why you are not qualified to step into the new. Accusations are more potent in the seasons of transition. Please remember the things I'm sharing with you. There are, there are times you do things and even Satan will pretend like he did not see it. He's waiting for a moment where that thing will, 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 will be most effective when it is brought to the limelight. Is God blessing us. Every gate, every gate has gatekeepers. Everything you are trusting the Lord for, Every result you are desiring. Listen to me. I'm begging somebody. Whatever it is you are trusting God to do in your life. Actually, there is somebody already there. You are not the first to do anything. Ah. Time is not on our side. If you are writing very quickly, three ways to open doors. Three ways to open doors and open gates. Three ways to open doors. Number one, transformation. 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 If you are writing quickly, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. The Bible says, "For we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord." We are changed, we are transformed into that same image, even from glory to glory. There are certain seasons, certain desired results, certain desired outcomes that are actually not at the mercy of prayer. They are not at the mercy of tears. They are at the mercy of transformation. You eat. That season requires another version of you. There are certain seasons that will continue to resist a version of you that has no stature, no capacity to stand there and not be corrupted. And so the more you are trusting and praying and crying to God for that particular door to open, the best God can do for you is take you through certain seasons that qualify you. That's why I'm telling us that there are certain prayer points. The answer is affliction. Because the affliction will finally give you the prerequisite level of dealing that fortifies and qualifies you to handle that thing you are asking for in the first place. It was Joseph that said he saw in the visions of the night, the sun, the moon, 11 stars bowing before him. Suddenly, when you have that kind of dream, you wake up with a smile. And those kind of dreams, they, are, they, they interpret themselves. From the, from the dream as you are dreaming, you already know the meaning. So you'll be smiling before you, you, you woke up. When, when you get up, you will just be telling the people by your side, it's, it's just a matter of time. They will say, go and wash that plate. Something you will say, did you remember? You say, it's a matter of time. Then, because of the, the level of joy, he could not hold it. He now discussed it in a family meeting. And say, just to let you guys know, <laughs> the son, and to show you how very simple it is to interpret that matter, the father did not take, as, as the guy is talking, the father discerned it quickly. He said, you are a very naughty boy. You are a very bad boy. <laughs> are you saying that myself, your mother and your brethren will bow before you? Go 
go and wash the clothes. And then you'll be going. His song is, my status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Just as many of you, after meetings like this, sometimes to validate the authenticity of your encounter, a prophet will come and isolate you from a crowd. I was going home, somebody called you and said, brother, sorry, God said I should tell you. Then you smile and say, you, you are not the first person that told me. Actually, I know this thing. <laughs> ah, rejoice, brother. But you see what God only tells you is the destination. He does not give you detail of the process that will carry you there. He shows you, you see, that's the only thing he showed Jesus. He showed him the end that he set before him. <laughs> when Jesus entered time, he began to see all that details that comes with the end. And for the sake of that glory, he endured it. What God will also do to you, he will show you an end. Then he will leave you to see whether you are willing to go through what it takes to stand there. There are many of you, you are saying, Lord, why have you abandoned me? God did not abandon you. This is the only path towards that glory. If it was cheap, everybody would be there. Suddenly, the first step that follows the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to you. In other words, you became a leader. The first, the first season that follows it is that they sold you into captivity first. Why you are meditating on how wicked men can be? Because a new philosophy will now enter you. One of your popular messages in that season is fear man. See, if I tell you waiting my, my blood, my family do me. <laughs> While he is supposed to be nursing that, God now decides, you know, from time to time when your discouragement become too potent, God will give you a small iota of encouragement. So God, God give him small favor in the land of captivity. So although he is a slave, he was a favored slave. So among slaves, he walks with his hand in his pocket. He was a custodian of his master's wealth. Suddenly, another layer came. An Egyptian, a woman who has all kinds of pleasures as her beck and call, she located the man with a destiny. And said, lie with me. And he said, no. Now, the most important part of this story is what I want to tell you now. A person that says no, that God is supposed to say, you try. You try. Not too many men overcome these kind of things. For what you did, we have decided that in, in blessing, I shall bless you. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even hear anything. That God that spoke to him, that, last, that was the last time. God did not explain what was happening. Then the woman cooked up a story and said, he actually tried to force himself on me. And while I was shouting, he was scared that people would come to my rescue. And then he wanted to flee and I held his garment. And the proof was in her hand. There was Jacob's, uh, uh, Joseph's favorite shirt was there. And Potiphar knew that shirt. <laughs> so they didn't ask him. You know, <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where all you are asking God for is, Lord, clear my name. Let me share something with you. They do realize that when Pharaoh sent for Joseph, they didn't ask what took you to the great... Uh, the prison in the first place. The day when your word will come, huh? everything that accused, everything that is a misconception, everything you are trusting God that it will be cleared, it will not be relevant. God just encouraged one sister somewhere now. You say, but let me, I, I, need, I just need to sit down with them in December. I just need to travel home so that we will just have a family meeting. Let me clear my name. Don't clear anything. Many people were going on errands that are not supposed to be and things that are not so important. In fact, there are people that died and when you hear why they died, you will not believe it. One of our friends is having a wedding somewhere in, in Adamo. You know how far that place is? The last time I went there, you need to see how, how my leg was swollen when we came down from the car. Who followed me there? We, we started the trip by 6 a.m. We got there by, by 10 p.m. Or 9, 9. 9 to 10. I mean constant motion. You didn't stop once. There is a portion of the trip where you, you come down from the car and enter a boat. Guess what the brethren did there? As soon as we came down, they say, Ah, sir, the people are hungry. We, we have been desperately waiting. They took us from there.
to the pulpit. You know, you the day the day you were praying and then you heard a, a sound in your ear that I will announce you. <laughs> With visibility comes all kinds, all kinds of hazard. Pastor only you are my witness. We were traveling once like that, and kidnappers came out of the bush. We began to shoot. We we ran out of our jeep. We ran out of the car. Everybody plus. Apostle with anointing, everybody. <laughs> that thing that happened, it happened while we, we were going. We have not even reached the destination yet. You know, you would think you are a brave man. Wait until you hear the sound of real gun. I'm not talking about that, that one you hear in film. It's, different. it's not that sound. When, when you hear a sound coming near you, It was that day I realized that, look, there is. <laughs> there is no need to lie to, to anybody. We are all men. <laughs> the first, the first, the first instinct in me was survival. You know, you, 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 in your mind, you say you will speak in tongues and then the bullet will come and hit you and, and, and then fall. I guarantee you by the Holy Ghost, eh? if you are in that situation, you will learn that there are many scriptures that is only inside your head. It's not in your spirit yet. We were running. While I was running, I was pulling out scriptures to, so that it will count that at least we, we believed. <laughs> Guess what? It was that season that God told me and confirmed his word through his prophets saying, I am announcing you. Those were the days we began to travel newly. The thing that follows traveling is now a threat to life. When, when I now arrived at the destination, I climbed the podium. I began to speak like a cherub. I said, some of you don't know the layers of death that we have to defy to appear upon this hallowed podium. Hey, the people now, they were looking at me like, like a man who, who walked through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> I've gone listening. See, stay with me. I've gone to the east. Every, and, and, and the Lord Jesus has opened the gate of the east to us. I've gone to the east and the people who were introducing me, they came up and said, we want to call our brother, Pastor Ephraim Emmanuel. He comes all the way from Kaduna, a place where any moment is a potential time to die. <laughs> where, where they are now, they are listening to me. So it's a proof that what I'm telling you is exactly what they said. They, they are following me, they are listening to me. A place where when you come for church, you must make sure your way is right with God because the church service might be the last because bomb can happen. And so if you want to find men of genuine stature, it is this kind of man. And so I guess, guess what? I will allow them to finish everything they've said. I will now walk very slowly as though. If this is what God has called us into, who are we to... to So when we come, I'll come and carry the mic and I'll say, the first scripture is for me to live is Christ. But if I die, it's gain. The heart of the people, they will say, my God, these are, these are dead men. <laughs> wake, wake any of us up any day, any time. Give him the chance to choose. Live or die, he will choose life. <laughs> I want to say something just so that, you know, all of this masculinity, all of this desire to sound so novel and then to begin to appear to be more than what you have been graced to be. Huh? The best of us is a man. And from time to time, your humanity will speak. When God says, 
I am giving you this land. I'm giving you this territory. The next thing you should be expecting is a, a, affliction. Affliction has a very important role to play to bring you to what God has said he will do. It is affliction that hides those seasons from the open. It is affliction that makes sure not too many people journey on that path. I'm speaking to somebody here whose hand is clean before God, yet they are going through certain very, very hard situations and they are beginning to think is something wrong. Nothing is wrong. This is the way it works. I'm speaking to somebody who have decided to stay pure with God and the more they are pressing, the more they are trusting God to see the dividends of consecration. It's looking like they are going backward and those who are cutting corners are gaining more favor, gaining more progress. Listen to me. This is the only way. It will look like they have journeyed ahead of you. But suddenly you will get up and walk on water. Because there is a season that is qualifying you. You can never remove affliction from the dealings of God with a man. It is during affliction you learn to possess your soul. You possess your soul inside that affliction. You possess your soul. You learn to put your soul under government. Somebody say, why, why do bad things happen to good people? It's because you didn't follow the story for long. You, all, you, 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 are, you are only looking at what is happening now. The Bible talks about the end of the righteous is well, is well. Is this end? Is this end? Say it shall be well with me. I've said this here some time ago and I'm reiterating it again today. Everybody sitting here, there is a cross for you to carry. The moment you embrace it and carry it quickly, and there's a way you will grumble, there's a way you will complain, you will repeat that class again. You will start from the beginning. You know, there are those of us who think God is a man, so you want to blackmail God emotionally. You are bitter, you are angry, and God that is looking at you, he is seeing the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart. He is seeing it. Let these two things be acceptable. Your heart, you are like this, in bitterness. Then in your mouth, you now say, Lord, even though you slay me, yet I will praise you. And he's just looking at you. You are bitter. You are very offended. There are some of us, in fact, somebody sent a threat to God through me and say, I just want you to know, Apostle, that if God does not do anything, I, anything you hear about me, uh, just take it like that. So I say, ah, wait oh. You think if you backslide, you think if you look back, if you go into the world, you think you cheat God. Some of you, let me even tell you something. Because of the, the few years you have worked with God, the plan Satan has for you, the day he catch you. <laughs> Jesus. You see, you see that day you just got up in the night. You know, I bind. They say, okay. So, we would, we will meet. There were many programs of darkness you have, you have, you have affected, and you now you are, you are hoping that one day you can just. There are people that don't have second chances. There are people say if Satan have them for one minute, he will capitalize on it. Why there will be another sister who is busy committing abortion week in week out, back to back abortion, sleeping every day, sleeping with men. She is not infected with anything. But there is one sister, Satan, is hope the first day she will try it. He will know the plan. The thoughts that he has towards you. <laughs> Please tell yourself it's too late to look back. Because it is, it is during this season of affliction when it's beginning to look like righteousness has no advantage. This is where men look back. It's very easy to begin to rethink your stand and begin to cut corners and begin to drop your standard of consecration and holiness. It's these seasons. Actually, what God promised the righteous is his end. In Job chapter 8 verse 7, he says, Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall be greatly increased. It's okay to start small. But God will not let you finish small. That is your own heritage. There are people here, you will need to resubmit yourself again to the process you have escaped from. 
there were dealings that were supposed to qualify you for seasons that are supposed to be for your lifting but you, 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 you escaped the dealing you left it let's, let's bow our heads wherever we are we're going to pray in the next one minute anywhere you are ask the Holy Ghost lead me, lead me again into the school of the spirit lead me lead me again to the path ordained for me in any way I have journeyed out of the path you have ordained for me to walk because of resistance, because of hardship, because of challenges, lead my feet back, lead my feet some of you came out of a relationship a very godly relationship because of something in the moment you don't know what is in tomorrow lead my feet oh God some of you started a business and only one month only one month you pack it up and say it's not working who told you it's not working you just face one or two resistance and then you turn your back no no in this kingdom is diligent men men that remain they are the ones that leave the crown he that endures to the end he shall be saved Holy Ghost lead my feet again to the path ordained for me to walk for there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end of that way is destruction Hallelujah. Very quickly before we pray, I would have to continue my teaching next week because time is not on our side. But let me finish uh, point number one. I was talking about the ways to open doors. We're in point number one. Listen. The first thing that must happen to a person before the doors and the various installations that causes for transition to become subjected to his arrival and to his command is that you must appear in your true form. You are not born in your most superior form. You are not born in your most superior form. Every one of us was born looking like our ancestors. So there is a provision in the kingdom called born again that you use to align to the program of God, number one. Number two, to the stature of your true identity in God. You may have some advantages in the flesh, certain areas of ability. And if you build your life around that ability, you will live a wasted life at the end of your days. Because actually, your superior advantage is only inside that new bed when you come into Christ. That's where you discover who you truly are. And so immediately you are born again, all of creation, all of the creation of God, they become subjected to your command. The Bible says the annex expectation of creation, creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. The same way you don't know of any monkey or any gorilla that has C of O. But they have their houses. Because the creation of God is serving them. No fish has a business. No bird has a farmland. These are all the lesser life that maintain their form. So creation still recognizes them. And creation is at their service. There is one creature that fell from his form. So cre creation does not know him. They are still waiting for the days when the sons of God will manifest. It came to pass that after a long while they saw one. The wind and the waves, they were subjected to his command. He will speak to nature. Nature is serving him. He will say, go to the river. You will hide. You will see that there is a fish. That the assignment of that fish is to hold a coin from, the, from his bed. And that coin is because on a certain day, a son of God will need it. Only two times, only two times that salutation, son of God was used. 
Number one, it was Adam. Number two, is the last Adam. Because when they went through genealogies, it came to Adam, they say, Adam, son of God. Then in Jesus' baptism, baptism, a voice was heard, say, this is my beloved son. So God said, this one is, that is, is what we have in mind. This is why everything was serving him. He will speak to things that are not even living and you will see the power of creation to submit to a son of God. Listen, growth is your advantage. You will be the first benefactor of growing. When you grow into sons, everything begins to serve you. Men will gang up against you. The air will judge them. Men will be planning your evil. The water they drink will condemn them. Every element is at your disposal. You can bend anything as a weapon of war. Because at that time where creation can recognize you as one of the sons of Elohim, they are at your service. Okay. See, that land where you, if you don't plant anything reasonable, it will bring you thorns and weeds. That thing you are calling weed is the food of another animal. So the space that is supposed to be used to cater for you naturally, they prioritize every other thing that is in their original form. Not, they don't know you yet. They don't, this one, we don't know this person. And when Jesus came, he began to give us certain credentials that the immortals use to guarantee that you are a man. One of it is that men ought always to pray. If prayer for you is a burden, it means you don't have a relationship. So prayer is not fellowship. You don't have any, any yearning to spend time with God. And prayer is not always about request. If your prayer point is request, you will be very tired. There is a point in prayer where it's like where lovers meet. The way you are excited about a person, all right, if you are falling in love here, it's only those of you that can understand what I want to say now. Now, listen, I'm old enough to talk about love where my mother is because I'm, I'm not a small boy. <laughs> you, would, you would realize that there's a joy. A joy that makes you not conscious that you have not eaten. Sometimes I see lovers misbehaving. It's one of my friends. I will not call his name. May God give us understanding. <laughs> Sometimes I will walk into the room like this. When we're on campus, I will see he put his phone. They are doing video call, two of them. Like this. Then he now, he fell asleep. The, the love is too much that. The, the, the call, they were just talking until he slept. I will now see very helpless. So I now changed his name from his name. I started calling him Lovina. Now, you see that, that, that brother, nothing in this life will make him call any man eh? and stay that long and not his and say, guy, please, let's talk tomorrow. The... If you are here and you have done something foolish because of love before, raise your hand above your head. May God bless all, all the sincere people and to all the pretenders, may God have mercy. A brother took his school fees and used it to pay the lady's school fees first. Then, two months to the closing of the portal, he now began to trouble everybody in his contact and say, is this how you watch a brother just... Why did he take that very careless step? You see, you see that thing that love makes you do that is against common sense, against how, how you are feeling, against logic. That is how love gives you stature to tarry in prayer. You will be beholding his face and you will be lost. It's, it's, it's a beauty. It's a joy. There is an essence that rubs on you. You will want to live like this. Love will say, just five more minutes. That five minutes, you will just take one song. As you start the song, you will look at your time. It's five hours. Five. There was one Sunday morning. 
I prepared, I dressed up that I was going to church. And now came near my door. I had, I had a feeling like I, sh I should just thank the Holy Ghost. I should just thank you. So I knelt down near my bed. And I was saying, thank you, Jesus. Heaven bears me witness. This is all I remembered saying. Thank you, Jesus. When I left that place coming out, it was 6 p.m. So time, time was was swallowed up inside that, that small. This is how a man can be in an, in an encounter that looked like 30, 30 seconds for him and he had, he had been in a, in a trance for maybe three days. Because there is, there is a love that, that makes time not real again. There is a place in prayer where you will be still and, and hear. Get feedback. Get feedback. Prayer is not about you alone. And, and, every, and prayer is a conversation. And every conversation should have a, 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 another end. It's two-sided. If it's only you that will talk, it's not, a, it's not a conversation. You hear from him. Holy Ghost, lead me. Look at this situation. Give me wisdom. When you are done asking for wisdom, did, did you wait to hear what he has to say? What, what was I sharing about before I got to this, this relationship to transformation? Now, there's, there's a point in spending time with him that now causes for transformation. When the, that new bet is achieved, your yearning will become different because your nature has been changed. Just the way a lion is not yearning to eat grass, huh? that's how they have changed you. So your priorities also will alter. You will realize that you begin to give emphasis to spending time with God. I'm heading somewhere before we pray. It's not just about being reborn also. There is a natural aura everybody carry. There is an atmosphere around you, subconsciously, interacting with people before they really know who you truly are. Do you know that if I don't know, like I don't know this brother or this brother, and I'm seeing you for the first time, there are certain premonitions I would have about you. Even if there is nothing you have done to suggest that opinion. This is how people see some people and they just feel be careful. And there is, no, there is nothing that person have done to warrant that suspicion. There are places if they steal something, everybody will be thinking about one person. There is something on that person's head that always singles him out for, for, for reproach. Anywhere. And then there are people, no matter where they hide, even in a thousand people, people will always say, be our leader. What they are, they, they don't know you from anywhere. Everybody just came into just one. They don't know your background. They don't know who you are. You have no result to show that you are better than anybody. But auras, auras. There is like perfume. People wear it subconsciously. When God wants to put favor upon your life, He tilts your aura. He does something to your aura. Men don't know why they are moved. They, they don't know you from anywhere. A door was locked for everybody. They say no room. You, you came. They say no room. You turn your back. They lose their peace. They say you. No, that one. Come. What they are responding to is your aura. See, this is what Isaac was speaking about. What's that scripture? I think it's Genesis 27, 27. He says, the scent of my son is like the scent of a field that the Lord God has blessed. This is, he changed that guy's aura. Hi! Suddenly, he will realize that there are many things that does not react to action. It's not always by works. There are many things, many other periods of your life where the favor of God upon your life will be responsible for the results that enter your life. There are, see, there, there are only a handful of people that will not open up to you and tell you that there is a book of achievement in their life that can only be God. They cannot explain how they... Somebody calls you and say, I, I just thought about you as I got 
a hint of this information. What is he calling you for? A job offer, a news he had. He called you. That person has a brother. That person has a relative. In the day that matters, the particular door opened and the favor on your head, make sure he forgets every other person that has blood connection with him. Somebody looks at you and gives you five million and says, just take it and go and try to start this business. Let's see whether it will work. Are you, are you telling me that he does not have family members who are waiting on him for one or two things? It's the favor of the Lord. It's like a perfume. The way you wear a perfume is not three-dimensional. It's not palpable. You can't touch it, but you can, you can perceive it. This is what favor is like. People carry favor. You can't see it. But you can, you can deduce that there is a finger supporting this person. There are people here, the programming of darkness over their family is an aura of shame, an aura of servitude. From one generation to another, the fathers will pass it to the sons. An aura of shame, of ridicule. There are people who have had dreams. Because God was trying to draw your attention to this truth. You have had dreams and you have seen yourself in a place where there are many excreta, many feces. There are many feces everywhere, a very filthy, and you are seeing you are, you are wearing a filthy garment. They are showing you the aura. That is the subconscious energy people pick when they come near you. Mind you, your reputation will travel ahead of you. Your reputation is like a protocol officer that goes ahead of you and opens a door before you arrive. So before people get to meet you and say, who are you? May we know you? They already adopt certain, certain conclusion, which is a product of whatever they feel like they peek around you. I've met a couple of people who don't have anything on anybody, but they tell me they are not comfortable around them. I don't, I don't have my peace around that person. And they stay with that conclusion like a joke. That person have no favor around them. If you are here and you continue to enter doors and the door will push you back, you, another door open, you enter, it push you back. After two years again, another opportunity, the same storyline, the same outcome of going back is an aura. There is something people are not waiting to know you first. They continue to conclude. They continue to draw conclusions. Listen, listen. Exactly like I told you. The scent of my son. He says it's like the scent of a field that the Lord God has blessed. What is the scent around your life? This is what doors respond to. Many people will knock and no door will open and for gates over change of seasons, gates that are hosting new realms of reality, new realms of increase to open for you, one of the things gates will react to is your aura, the thing. Fill me up Till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over Fill me up Till I overflow I want to run next week and continue this matter. But I want you to hold this prayer. Lord, the scent of my destiny, the scent over my life, the scent over this destiny. Listen, listen, listen. I don't want you to be careless about what we want to do. I need you to realize that you may not have the opportunity to meet so many people, but they can have premonitions about you. There are people that will just see somebody's face. You're my witness. And people will see my picture and call me and say, well, We just saw a picture of yours. And we want to just encourage you. Picture. Mind you, when Jacob was running away from home, 
he, he, did not, he did not carry any sheep. He didn't ride any donkey out of the house. The only thing he took was a staff, just, just to aid his movement. Esau was crying that I have been cheated. And it was Esau that stayed at home and inherited all the land, all the cattle, everything physical was Esau. Yet he was crying because they knew what blessing is. There's an aura Jacob took from home. It's the scent he carried. He left home with it. It's that scent that brings all these physical things. All these, these things Esau is, is inheriting. He knows it, 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 it is momentary. What is on Jacob can command these things. What is the scent over your destiny? What do people pick every time they come near you? Why do doors continue to close anytime you come near it? Why is the most popular answer you get from people no? Why does it work for every other person except you? Why do you need to explain yourself all the time? Why can't they just believe you are innocent? Why must you present a proof all the time? There's, a, there's an aura. There is a scent. There are people you look at them and, and immediately you begin to feel like this person is an unfaithful person. I'm telling you the truth. And they continue, they continue week in, week out, day and night, explaining themselves in every season. Lord, what is writing this ungodly narrative about my life? Lord, what is telling people and selling the wrong ideas about who I am? Lord, what is responsible for this wrong conclusion about me all the time? The scent, the scent of my son is like the scent of a field that the Lord God has blessed. What is your scent? I will not give you a prayer point at this point again. Just carry the body in your soul. Turn it. Turn it into a prayer. The Holy Ghost will tell you what to pray for now. I overflow I want to run I really hope you are praying now. Is, is it raining? It's raining. It's a sign. It's a sign. Let's pray. <laughs> you can't run. <laughs> Stay and settle this thing. Lord, where does a habalist go to? Where does he go to? What does he play with in people's life to cause for increase? He alters their aura. He alters their aura, the scent around their life. He alters it. Today, you too, you can journey. You can journey. You can journey. You can journey. And you can wear the fragrance of Christ. Hey! Hey! The fragrance of Christ, you can wear it. We speak to doors, we speak to gates. Be open, be open. The endless expectation. Of creations, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God.
says, Thou anoint my head with oil. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Whatever anointing that has the capacity to affect your cup, whatever anointing that has the capacity to affect your cup, whatever God must do to your head that will affect your cup, go ahead and cry to the Lord. Anoint me with fresh oil. to explain yourself to people. Why must your own situation, why must it be hard for you all the time? always misunderstood everybody don't like you what is going on why are they always ganging up against you saints of God, please give me your attention. I want to tell you something before we pray again. We pray one more time and then we go. Is that okay? Listen. Listen. In the day, in the day when the credential of hard work 
in the day when the demand of hard work has been met eh, you will find out actually that the arm of the flesh will fail man you are not the only one that worked hard from in, in that year alone the number of graduates a, ABU alone released into the system you now say okay you you are first class do you know how many first class came out from different schools the cosmos will produce many copies of you in the world there's no uniqueness you have your uniqueness is inside God What, 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 was, what was Esther's uniqueness? Is it beauty? Every lady they invited to the palace was a speck. The credentials that was used to select them from their province was that they were the finest to behold. So beauty was wrong on that day because beauty was not a defense. What was Esther's strength? Was it that she went through purification? Every lady went through purification hi the bible says she found favor she found favor that somebody just looks at her from a glance and said this is the person they say but but there are things he said this is the person when god shows you favor nothing the enemy can say to undo that decision i want you to cry for one minute anywhere you are Lord, give me favor. Pour your favor upon my destiny. Every negative atmosphere, every negative air, we are battling with every negative environment, every negative air, every negative atmosphere that I have been carrying along in my journey in destiny. Today as we pray, you are going to declare, I part ways, I part ways with atmospheres of rejection, atmospheres of shame, I part ways. We are almost leaving. Make sure you are praying now. We are about to come out. We are about to come out. We are about to come out. At most feet. Shift now. Yes, be broken. Break now. Holy Spirit, come down. Heaven's open. Heaven's open. At most be. At most be. Sleep now. Sleep now. Yes, 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 yes. 
I live a life of for favor Cause I know who I am Listen Your life has changed I know not too many of you Not too many of you can believe the intangible but it is more real what has happened to your head what has been programmed upon you has altered the course of your life is washing you up now he's washing you up and he's clothing some people he's clothing them every every hour of shame those of you who walk naked naked in your encounters naked in your dreams and you are feeling so ashamed the Holy Ghost is clothing you now you are entering a new phase a new season We are walking in power. We are walking in miracles. We live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. I know who I am. Listen, say I walk in favor. Come on, come on. You are saying it like you are scared. Say I walk in favor. Because I know who I am. I am a child of God. Creations will serve me. Everything will serve me. Go ahead and give Jesus a shout of praise. consciousness good things are supposed to happen to you every day he loads us with benefits every day must have a sign that God loads you with benefits walk in this consciousness it might not work for any other person but my case is different See, immediately people just speak negative. Don't be quiet. Don't reply it in your heart. You do speak quickly. The moment you, just, you hear that thing, it's an atmosphere. It, it wants to create an aura around your life. Don't be quiet. Release your own. Yeah, others may say there's a casting down, but you, you. While men are saying, so it means men will be saying all kinds of negative things with their life. Your own mouth will only speak your lifting. They come and gang up, they come around you, gisting about how backward Nigeria is, gisting about how terrible the economy is. Don't use your mouth to say that to you. As people are talking bad, as people are describing the way the country is failed, you, there is a lifting for me. I prosper in this land. Nigeria is so blessed. Only speak good things. Don't let Satan, don't let Satan release any, any utterance around your space. Somebody comes and carries, carries, carries your, 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 your baby. 
and begins begins to pass derogatory derogatory statements about your own child. No, speak, speak, dear, speak, dear. Don't be quiet. <laughs> I don't I don't entertain any negativity around me. And when I see you trying to convince me, making putting in effort, I will, I will cut our our relation. You will not even be coming around my space. Today, the question I put to you is the same question the Holy Ghost has put to ages before us. Whose report would you believe? You will choose whose report you will believe concerning the events and the, the outcome of your life. There are people here that have this subconscious meditation that they will not, they will not live long. They, they, just, they just have one kind of feeling, one knowing that they will not live long. Like they are not going to be there when their children are old. Or when their children grow up. That there's something just trying to convince them. Just subtly, subtly, gradually. The person is now entertaining a thought. And that thought is beginning to dominate his members. Before you know it. One small sign here. One small symptom. The person goes to the internet. What does it mean to have a pain? And this is this. Then the devil is waiting with him with a paragraph. Then they give you a very debilitating name of a sickness. You have not gone to the hospital to do tests yet. But you are going to the hospital with an expectation now. Because there is already something that has impregnated your mind. Hi! Whose report would you believe? The diseases of the Egyptian shall not come near your dwelling. That's what God said. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you are here and that spirit is on you, convincing you you may not live long and you might come down with one organ failure or another or something will happen, I want you to say these things to yourself. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live to declare the works of the Lord. Tell yourself these things. When a thought cross your mind, don't use another thought. Don't think scripture. Say scripture. Say it out. If, if you are using thought to fight thoughts, it's called worry. When a thought cross your mind, allow Satan to know that you, you heard him and you knew who spoke. Talk loud! Come. Those who stay around me, well, from time to time, I vocalize these things. There are days I will just say, I can never be small. You know what the devil? The devil wants to now tell you that you are you are making some progress. You are making some progress. You are, you are trying. God is helping you. You are trying. Look back. Look at where you are coming from. That thought, that thought is to create an air of arrival. Hey, if 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 you if you don't speak quickly, your heart will take another posture. The, this I'm so excited about the rain. So we will capitalize on the rain and we will take the next five minutes as we trust the Lord for the rain to subside. Then I will come up after five minutes. Let's receive the ministry of our beloved brother, Minister Angelo. Come on, lift up your hands, don't stop praying. Come on. Yarani Esuna. And Sama Kamarda Kai. Yarani Esuna. Yarani Yesuna Yarani
is persuaded they have shifted seasons. When the Lord turns again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Listen. Everything that has cost you sleepless nights, everything that has brought pain and shame and all kinds of thoughts of trouble to you as we worship the Lord as we contemplated on his holy laws those seasons are short forever in the name of Jesus Christ now over your life everything you put your hands to do in righteousness it prospers now in the name of Jesus Christ everywhere the thief has stolen from you everything stolen today we declare restoration in sevenfold in the name of Jesus Christ Everybody here that certain elements are resisting them from crossing in. They know, they know that doors continue to open but to cross, to enter. You come to the palace but you never enter. By the power of the Holy Ghost, may the favor of the Lord come upon you now and orchestrate a transition in the name of Jesus Christ. Every ungodly aura, every ungodly aura, an atmosphere that causes for bad outcomes, that is following you, ruining things in your destiny, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we clean that aura from your life and we put favor upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody here who have innocently walked out of God's plan for their life and those of us who willfully in disobedience may the mercy of God speak for you now. May the mercy of God speak for you now. Everybody in this place going through one delay or another and they are just trusting God. What must I do? Who must I meet? Whatever contact God must bring into your life. Whatever person that must walk into your destiny. Whatever relationship that must be struck. By the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord orchestrate that encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you that somebody has to remember you so that goodness will come to you like Joseph everything you have done that has been forgotten that if they remember can change your life may the Lord put your thought in their heart now in the name of Jesus Christ Everybody broken. Everybody carrying one baggage here or another. May the Lord relieve you of that pain. May the Lord relieve you of that weight. Now I speak to gates and doors. A father be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Businessman, listen to me. Whether you are here on site or you are online, I shift your business.
to a new height in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody with one employment or another or trusting God for an employment, may the door to employment open and may the door for promotion open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people that have applied things and they have forgotten it because it has delayed too long. God is remembering you today. God is remembering you today. God is remembering you today. Everything that has died in your life, everything that has died in your heart, by the resurrection power, we call it back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. out of everything that has been taken from your life unjustly by the power of the Holy Ghost may the Spirit of God orchestrate multiple restorations in the name of Jesus Christ while we sang that song I hear double for your sorrows you will receive double for your sorrows. You will receive double for your sorrows. Now if you can receive it, it's for you. In the next seven days. In the next seven days. From the north, south, east and west. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. They appear in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Your hands will build old waste places. The projects that your father started and could not finish, you will finish it in your lifetime. Everything you start, you will complete it. You shall not die but live. Your going out and your coming in is preserved. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. While men shall say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting. I declare upon you with long life God will satisfy you the aura of honor is coming upon people like like a cloak like a cloak honor you will begin to lead men from today you will begin to lead men from today the aura of a king is coming upon you is the aura of royalty it will command the allegiance of men they will give you their resources they will set you over them they will hearken to your counsel they will honor you they will honor your words you will not be taken for granted anymore
New seasons, new seasons, new seasons. New versions of you. New versions of you. Some of you are entering into new capacities. There's creativity, creativity, creativity coming upon people. Creativity, creativity. You will be, you will be, you will be decked with creativity. in the midst of his people is mighty. A uh, sign. A uh, sign. Very quickly, I want us to celebrate and honor the pastor of the Living Faith Church and Guan Yerua uh, district here in Habikut Hall. He's here with us. Please celebrate Pastor Peter. Thank you so much, sir. Please, sir, can you come? We have had the privilege of sharing this venue with him and we have not had any cause for concern. He had been such a very lovely and, you know, um, amazing man of God. He exemplifies the virtues of the kingdom and he is a man upon whom God has labored so much. It is with a heavy heart that I announce to us that he has been posted out of Kaduna. Uh, uh, he has been posted um, in location with help. But we trust God that it is a fat place and it is a, a fruitful land. Yes, and I, I feel like it is it is good that we acknowledge the virtues of the Lord that we have been benefactors of through his life by just stretching our hands to him and praying the prayer of blessings from the depth of our hearts that the Lord will go before him, make every crooked place straight break in pieces the gates of brass cut asunder the bars of iron give him the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that he will know is the God that has called him by name he is the God of Israel we declare that that land will serve him, we declare that the goodness of that land he will eat the land will receive him honorably we declare no weapon formed or fashioned against him shall prosper, we declare only good news, we will continue to hear from him we declare as we have the chance to visit to see each other we will testify of the goodness of god we declare he continues to go brighter and brighter thank you jesus in jesus precious name we have prayed please let's celebrate god's choice Sabbath.
If you're here with your tithes, can you run forward? Package your offerings also. Quickly. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Are you a cheerful giver tonight? If you are a cheerful giver, can we celebrate God? Can you celebrate Jesus? If you are a cheerful giver. You know, we give because we love God. Not because we are compelled or we are forced to give God. Amen. Just hold out your offerings and just speak to God. Speak those words as we give our offerings. These offerings, this tithe will speak for you. The Bible says in Malachi 3.10, it says, test me, try me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out my blessings. He went on to say that the blessings will be so much that you won't have enough room to contain it, which means there will be an overflow. That will be your testimony tonight. There will be an overflow. There will be an increase in your finances. There will be an increase in every ramifications of your life. In the name of Jesus. Can you just drop your tights? And then drop your offerings as the ushers move around. And then let's take the following announcements. Good news and a castle. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow being Saturday, we're going to be having our retreat. Are you excited? Come on. All workers and all intending workers, make sure you are there early. Amen. And we're going to be meeting at um, our dear um, evangelist Zuahu's house in Sabojari. Amen. Please, if you don't know the place, you can just ask anybody. Ask any of the executives. Amen. Then, there are some written announcements here. I will just read through because of our time. Our Father Apostle is going to be ministering at Nigerian Association of Christian Agriculturists. That is in ABU Zaria. Tagged, elevated. Yes, it's projected there so you can see that for more information. Amen. Then the Shining Light Convention 2023. The theme is the Effulgence, 7th, uh, 7th of September. And then the venue will be at Nighter Quarters in Sabo, Bagi Villa. Amen. Amen. If you're around that side, you can attend. Amen. Then the FCS of Kaduna State Polytechnic, Great Mission. 2023. The theme is the harvest. And then it's going to be holding in Katpoli to the water. Amen. Yes, they are being projected so you can see for more um, information. Amen. Worshippers Cafe 5.0. You can do better than that. Come on. Amen. Tagged Ascension. Amen. 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 All right, for the program at ABU, the program is tomorrow, 2nd of September. Amen. If you are in and around Zaria, you can attend that program. And I assure you that you are going to be blessed. Amen. So like I was saying, the Worshippers Cafe 5.0, you know, Worshippers Cafe is an exciting program. And then we take it personal because God has given one of us a mandate and then he has been... Come on, can you celebrate Minister Chris King? Sir, can you just stand up so that they can see you and celebrate you? Celebrate Minister Chris King. Amen. It promises to be an awesome time. Please don't be told. Don't be told. And then we are going to be gathering here. It is happening on the 17th of September, 
2023 here in this hall, the Habakkuk Hall. Amen. Amen. So don't say you didn't get the venue. It is here, right here. Amen. And you can see for more information. Then there's a program at NDA. The FCS at NDA. Amen. It's happening on the 3rd of September. Make out time if you're around that area to attend this great program. Amen. 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 Then on Tuesday, can you look at your neighbor? Tell your neighbor. Tuesday is Congress and Communion Service. Are you going to be there? Now, nah, answer sincerely. I'm going to be there. Amen. It's an awesome time. Come, let's pray together. Amen. Then on Friday like this, we meet for another Anakazu experience. I'm sure you have been blessed tonight. If you have been blessed tonight, can you celebrate Jesus as you jump upon your feet? Amen. Let's celebrate Apostle. Can we celebrate God's servant? Thank you so much. By the grace of God, just to buttress the things that he has said, tomorrow, God's willing, tomorrow um, evening, we will be in Zaria to um, bring God's word to the faculty of, is it faculty now or college of Agri? Faculty of, of Agri. So um, it, it promises to be a great time. We will be in the campus to bring God's, God's perspective. If you are around um, Zaria, please locate that meeting tomorrow. Um, then on Sunday, on Sunday we would be at NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy. We would be ministering at their FCS on Sunday. If you are around that space also, please make it a time of fellowship and come. Let's, let's love God together. Um, the place um, he was speaking about for the, the seventh, I, I believe, it's um, Shining Light Assembly. It's around that, um, I think it's, it's, it's the road to Baggy Villa. That other road up there, you, you, you are taking it straight, you will see it. Just make um, reference to the flyer and you will get accurate details. Tomorrow is workers' retreat. We are in a transition season. God is leading us to a bigger space. And so we are working deliberately on raising men and women who would help us hold the ground. I have announced this last week. Um, by the grace of God, from all indications, um, we will shift Congress to Friday and then Anakazo would go to Sunday. So um, our contacts will be somewhere around Banawa like I told you guys. We intend to still maintain this hall. So we would continue to have our Friday contact. It will, it will be more of, you know, um, a prayer, a worship and a marvelous um, atmosphere of God's supernatural visitation. And then um, the other meeting we're having Anakazo have it at Banawa, God's willing, because that's the place we're able to locate a hall that can take that capacity of people. It's a transition season. God has gone ahead of us. Make sure you are not left behind. God bless you and increase you and prosper you in the name of Jesus Christ. Go into your week and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>